Nicolas Dorier actually said that he, when he discovered Bitcoin, his way to learn it was to take the tests framework of the Bitcoin Core implementation and the Bitcoin J library uh, and copy the tests and port them to C Sharp and then write new C Sharp code uh, to make the tests uh, success or succeed. Uh, and, and that way, similar to you, uh, actually have that hands-on experience with the code. Uh, what, what do you think about that approach in hindsight? Uh, is, it, is it useful? Yes, but I will say it was really helpful for me to, like, I was sitting, like, right next to Chris uh, in, in this shared co-working space. And I was, I, I think for the first couple of weeks, like, he got no work done other than answering my nonstop questions. Um, but so long as you have some way of figuring kind of the, those kinds of things out, because I was, I was really starting from like zero. So maybe if you, if you, if I knew a bit more, then this would have been much better. Like if I was going, say, from a, a less technical understanding to a more technical understanding, then uh, I think that's a, a pretty good approach. Um, but as I was coming in with no knowledge whatsoever, uh, it, it was really imperative that I could like turn to the person next to me and be like, Chris, what is a transaction? <laughs> and then he can like try and explain that. But it, it does have the benefit of like, uh, so uh, the, the Bitcoin DRPC client is essentially just all the commands that you can ask the, the Bitcoin core code to, to do something with. So say like get new address, uh, send to address, uh, get raw transaction, these kinds of like things. Uh, and then I was implementing this in Scala. So I essentially just needed to understand like one thing at a time. Like I didn't have to understand the whole of how Bitcoin works to understand how, like, uh, what, what it means to say sign a transaction, which is just one command. And then I needed to figure out like what the type signature is for that method. Like, uh, w what are the inputs? What are the outputs? And what are their types? And then find that stuff in the Bitcoin S code base. And so that's also kind of how I started to learn the code base as well. Um, yeah, but I, it, it went, uh, I, I think it was a pretty good way for, for me to learn these things. But I will note that like, I, I asked questions nonstop for a couple of weeks um, and had someone there to answer those. Yeah, I, I do think that this is quite essential right, to be able to have a conversation and ask all these questions and probably ask them a couple of times right, before you really grok the whole picture. Uh, so, Chris, that was for sure a big time investment, but was it worth for you? Well, I mean, Nadav's still sitting here, so yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I mean, come on, like Nadav is also, you know, I would consider one of the, the lead architects, probably with uh, Tibo over in Crypto Garage of the DLC protocol. So, I mean, I, I don't know who understands Bitcoin better at this point at a technical level if it's me or him. So, um, you know, yeah, I, 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 yes, yes, unequivocally, yes. <laughs> Nice, that's a good compliment. 